Hey everyone, it's Lean from ColoradoLean.com. Welcome back to the craft room. Today we're going to be doing a two color screen print design onto a canvas tote bag. So to get started, I downloaded this beautiful SVG sunflower design from Creative Fabrica. I did a little bit of manipulating of it in Cricut Design Space. We're going to need our Cricut Explore Air 2, two standard grip cutting mats, a 12 by 12 and a 12 by 24. We're going to need any color Oracle 651 permanent adhesive vinyl. We're going to need our transfer tape. Um, I'm using medium tack transfer tape from 143 vinyl. To weed our design, we're going to need our ever trusty pin pen weeding tool, also from 143 vinyl. We're going to need for the screen printing, a 12 by 16 wood frame speedball screen printing frame. We're going to be working with black speedball fabric ink, opaque gold fabric ink. We're going to need a palette knife, or I may change this out to a wooden or to a plastic spoon. Our squeegee is a speedball graphic and fabric combination squeegee. And then, of course, we're going to need our canvas bag. This is a 13 by 14 inch bag from Make Market from Michaels. Um, we're also going to need paper towels because I am messy. We're going to need a hair dryer or heat gun to dry our design. And then for cleaning our screen, we're going to use a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. So the first thing we need to do is cut our design on the Cricut Explore Air 2. So let's head over and do that. Hey everyone, it's Editing Lean here. The short clips I had of the Cricut Explore Air 2 cutting the vinyl didn't make the cut because of the overall length of the video. I am showing a sped up version of weeding both stencils though. The Pin Pen Weeding Tool from 143 Vinyl is a fantastic tool. It works best when held at a 45 degree angle. One thing that may not be apparent in the video is how difficult it was to see the cut lines on the white vinyl. The entire time I had my head bent to the side just to see where I needed to be. In a moment on the bottom of this second stencil, you're going to see two letters that have been weeded out of the vinyl. The original plan was to put my blog address, coloradolean.com, at the bottom of the sunflower. When I started working on that portion of the stencil, something just didn't seem right. There was a large portion of the video that I deleted because I was just sitting there trying to figure it out. The problem was simple. When screen printing with vinyl, especially when working with letters, you need to mirror the image before you cut it. I didn't even think about that at the time. It worked out okay though. There really wasn't room for it anyway. Now back to the video. Now that we have our stencils all weeded and ready to go, we're going to continue with the process. So we have our black layer here, which is the outline. And then we have our gold layer here, which is the inside of the petals and the little holes. So we're going to do this one second. So we'll move that out of the way. The first thing we need to do is we need to get our transfer tape. Let me grab a pair of scissors here. So we're going to treat this like we would any other uh, permanent vinyl transfer. We're just going to get our transfer tape that's just a little bit bigger than the area we need. We're going to cut it down. And then we're going to put this over the top of our image. Okay, and then we need our handy dandy little squeegee here. 
to make sure we get this all the way down and all the air bubbles out. Oops. Now we typically want to go from the center out to get all of the air bubbles. And we want to especially pay attention to these little dots in here because these will correspond with the holes cut here on this stencil. Okay. So I think we have that well enough. We'll go ahead and turn it over, make a few passes this direction to make sure it is fully adhered to the transfer tape. And then we will start peeling up the corner. And we want to go at a diagonal. And of course, when we get to the center, we want to make sure that all of those little dots are staying on the transfer tape. It looks like they are behaving today. Fantastic. All right. So now the way we have this laid out, these little squares up here are going to help us line everything up. So we want to make sure that is at the top of our screen print frame and we haven't done anything differently so we still have the the tacky side of the vinyl up and we will set our frame over the top getting it as straight as possible right about there just set it down And then we will, again, adhere the vinyl to the mesh with our little squeaky. Okay, and then we'll turn this over, give it a little bit here. We want to be very careful that we don't puncture the mesh. If that happens, then you need to purchase another uh, replacement mesh here. Okay, now we're going to take our transfer tape off. And again, we want to be really cautious so that everything stays down. And be really careful when we get to... Oop, see, and right there, the vinyl is coming up. So we will go back over. Maybe we'll start at another corner here. Okay. All right, and there we go. And I will go ahead and save this piece of transfer tape. We can use it on our next layer. And I just want to turn this over, give it another run through to make sure nothing came up. Okay. Um, one thing I neglected to mention in our what we need portion, we need painter's tape. Any portion that we do not want printed has to be covered. So we'll cover that without covering our lines there or our squares. And this will protect our project. So the only place that will get the fabric ink is where we tell it to go. 
Okay, so we have our tape on there to protect our screen. And then now, as you can see with it on the white paper, the only place that you can see through is where we want in the middle of the, the stencil and our two marks up here. Everything else has been completely covered. Of course, again, it doesn't hurt to just go over it one more time to make sure it's all down nice and tight. And we'll bring our bag back in. Now, because this is such a thick seam right here and with the, the handles, um, I did put my Cricut Easy Prep Mat easy press mat in here and it is covered with a piece of parchment paper so it's all the way down here so i don't have to worry about that make sure i'm in frame here and i apologize if the table is moving at all so i want the design to be just here so let's we're gonna line this up as, as good as we can. It's a little crooked. It's a sunflower. It's not going to make much of a difference. I think that's good. Now, what we're going to do with our little guide marks there is we're going to take tape and we're going to put it down onto onto the bag okay so when we run the the black ink over the the screen we will leave ink here but it will just be on the tape it won't be on the actual bag so when we go to do our gold layer when we have the stencil on the screen we'll be able to line those lines up as well as lining up the gold in here or the empty spots just an extra little bit of precaution so now we will get our black ink out and we'll give it a little stir Now we want to put enough ink down to cover the entire project. Oh, and this is where I think I need a spoon. Uh, the more the better, although you don't want to, of course, overload it. Whatever you don't use can be put back into the jar, so that's handy. Whoops. Well, that probably wasn't very smart, but again, that's why I need plenty of paper towels. I just want to make sure I get plenty of ink down. My husband did make me a uh, DIY screen print press, um, although I can't use it for this project because my bag is too small. It doesn't fit on the platen. So we'll go ahead and put that up there. We will get our squeegee and on the fabric side, we will carefully hold our frame and just drag the ink down. Now we just want to go in one direction. Looks like it might need a little bit more ink. Just put that up there, pardon the reach. And for the gold, I'm definitely going to get a, a spoon. Um, the opaque ink is a little bit thicker, although this seems pretty darn thick. Okay. 
So because this is canvas, we want to make sure that we get plenty of ink down. And once we lift up the, the screen, that's it. We, we get what we get and we don't cry about it. So I'm just flooding the screen and then I'll go ahead and try and get even pressure. I'm getting a little nervous about this, but like I said, without the press, we get what we get and we don't cry. <laughs> um, we don't want to do this too many times because it might, it might push into the, underneath the, the stencil. So we're just going to call this one good. I'm going to carefully get this ink back in the jar. I, you know, I actually think this is going to turn out okay. Because it looks like the screen is drying. I'll put that in a box over there. Put it there. Clean my hands off before I touch my white canvas bag. Okay. Now comes the scary part. Did it work? <laughs> Let's find out. So we'll carefully lift and not so much. So I'm going to go ahead and let this dry to the touch. Um, this is where the hair dryer is going to come in handy or the heat gun. I will dry this. I will not remove my tape. So I'll have that. And I need to go wash my screen so that ink doesn't dry in it. And I will be back in a while. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's been a couple of hours since we did our black layer and everything is dry to the touch. Uh, it's a little sticky up here, but I don't have any ink coming off on my fingers. So to save a little bit of time, I already prepped my screen. So we'll just get this lined up. And I, we did have a little bit of ink go where it wasn't supposed to on the first layer. So it's not going to line up perfectly. So now that we have our layers lined up. We're going to take more tape and this time we're going to go ahead and cover up these holes because we no longer need them. So we wouldn't make a big deal if they were still open, but we're just, we're not going to need them. So now we're going to use our opaque gold speedball fabric ink. I'm going to open this up. Now, I don't know much about this particular ink, but it is a lot thicker. It's a lot chunkier than the black. So, not sure if that's right or if that's wrong. But on the one project that I have used it on, it turned out beautifully. So, we've got that stirred up and got me a spoon. We'll just go ahead and lay some ink out here. Oh yeah, spoon's definitely the way to go. And yes, again, it does look like I'm using a lot of ink. But whatever we don't use can go right back in the jar. We'll set that off to the side. We'll make sure we have our fabric. And here we go. So I'll just go ahead and flood the screen a little bit. Okay. And And 
Now I want to make sure I get enough ink on there. So we'll give it one more pull and then I think we'll lift it up and see what happens. Get this ink back in the jar. Okay, now we'll lift it up and we'll remember we get what we get and we're not going to cry. Fingers crossed. Ah! Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, no crying. Oh, yep, a little bit of tears. I didn't get it all the way down here. But you know what I'm going to try and do? I'm going to try and clean my screen because I have to so the ink doesn't dry. I'm going to leave my tape in place and maybe I can come back and do another layer after this dries. So I will give that a try in a couple of hours. But other than that, this is beautiful. I love this so far. Okay, well, I'm going to go wash everything up and I'll see you later. Hey everyone, so I was cleaning the frame and I was thinking about, you know, how am I going to line this up? Is it going to mess it up even more than it already is? And I thought I have plenty of paint left on my spoon and on my squeegee that I haven't cleaned off yet. I just figured I'd grab a paintbrush and paint this in. I think for myself, that's going to be just fine. So I just have a paintbrush that I've had for quite a few years. I'm not exactly sure how well this is going to cover, but it should be fine. And then I'll just have one more thing to wash up when I'm all done. And the best part, if I don't tell anyone, nobody's going to know. So let me just get this little edge over here. And there's a little bit on this petal that got missed. I'm working with my ambidextrous hands here. can't tell if that's it's a little bit of a glare here so I can't tell if it's canvas poking through or just shiny wet paint scrape that off just a little bit and smooth out my brush strokes here And there we go. Now let's see. There's a little bit of canvas showing through right here. Since I have the paintbrush out, I might as well try to fix it. Okay, a little bit on here. And I'm sure with these other spots, you know, I probably wouldn't even think about this in a while. But uh, since I'm here, I might as well try and fix it, right? Because this is working out really well. Okay, a little bit over here. A 
maybe just a touch on this petal. And maybe just smooth out this a little bit here. And you know what? I think we're done. <laughs> I think we are done. Of course, it looks like I was dragging that through. Maybe just a little bit. But anyway, so there we go. I fixed it. There we go. I'm so happy. All right. I will be back with you in about 24 hours, and then we will get this bag 100% finished. See you soon. Hey, guys. It's been well over 24 hours since we spoke last. And since the video has already gotten so long, I decided to go ahead and finish this without you. I hope you don't mind. Once we get our speedball fabric ink onto our surface, it does need to air dry for at least 24 hours. Um, that, of course, depends on the temperature and the humidity of the room that it's in. So that drying time may be less, it may be more. Then what we need to do is it needs to be heat set to cure. And I used my HTV Ron Auto Heat Press for this, or you could use a Cricut Easy Press set to 320 degrees for 40 seconds. You can also heat set Speedball Fabric Ink with your home iron or the Cricut Easy Press Mini set on high for three to five minutes. Let's take a look at this section here that I needed to add some fabric ink to. It looks beautiful. Nobody's ever going to know. If you don't tell, I'm not going to tell. But the ink is kind of thick, so it is a little bit shinier. So I think if I ever need to do this again, I'll take another palette knife. And after I paint the image in, then I will just scrape the extra ink off and then that should give the same result as the rest of the image other than that i couldn't be happier with how this bag turned out i think it is beautiful and i'm going to use it every time i go shopping so thank you so much for joining me for my adventure into two color screen printing and I will see you on the next adventure. So don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you'll know when I put up the next video. Until then, have a great day. Bye.